Are you unable to afford the high cost of competitive magic? Does the constant rotation of standard put too much of a strain on your wallet? Who are you and how did you get in my office? Are you just one modern banning away from bankruptcy? There's not even a door over there. And where's that music coming from? Are you stuck in a dead-end job, living paycheck to paycheck, forever afraid that Safeway will raise the price of ramen noodles? Yes, please, what do I do? My degree is in English literature. I have no useful skills whatsoever. I'm too old to retrain and they've already shut off my water. No, the answer is not legacy. I didn't say anything about legacy, but now that you mention it, buying into legacy makes a lot of sense. The cheapest, most affordable way to play magic is unquestionably to get into vintage. And I'm here to show you why. Wait, what? That kid, what a mess. What's this? Jumpin' Jehoshaphat's. Honey, look what I found in Little Junior's backpack. Where did he get these from? That's just part of his school assignment, dear. They're teaching dredge to our children in schools? Dredge in our schools. How to protect your family and your true blue values. Cabal therapy in the classroom. Lion's eye diamond in the lunchroom. Bridge from below on the playground. Like it or not, dredge has become part of our children's curriculum. It's not even real magic. I think the DCI should ban it from the schools altogether. It's dirty. I hear it goes off on turn one. I can't believe I just said that. I don't care if she's in a meeting. You get that cockamamie principal on the phone this instant. I'm a parent and a taxpayer. Hello, sir. This is Principal Campbell. What seems to be the trouble? Now you listen to me, Principal. Your school is teaching my boy Dredge and I won't stand for it. In this household, we see our legacy in one color and one color only. Blue. True and true. Sir, whether you like it or not, your child is going to have to learn about Dredge sooner or later. Would you rather he learn about it on the streets or in a safe, controlled classroom taught by a professional? Now you listen here, Principal Cabal. It's Campbell. I'm not opposed to him hearing about decks other than Delva and Miracles. Heck, we all experimented with Mono Red in college, am I right? Mmm, no. But I won't have you luring my boy into some girlfriend bracket with your promises of mannerless dredge. He'll just be up to his ears in debt and sitting alone with the bye. First of all, we don't teach mannerless dredge here. We teach clean, effective dredge, which other than a few key pieces is actually a reasonably priced deck for Legacy. And second, the girlfriend bracket? Am I talking to someone from the 40s? The girlfriend bracket is not a grouping at the bottom anymore. It's for fighters, for players who want to break away from the expectations and assumptions of others and demonstrate what they can do. I... Your son should be proud if he finds himself in the girlfriend bracket. Maybe if you are willing to embrace new ideas and new decks, you could join him too. I... You're right. I'm ready to abandon my preconceived notions about Dredge and learn the deck. Are... You? Hello? Prof! Prof! Hello? Prof? I can't hear you over the music. Huh? Oh, sorry, let me turn it down. Okay, what's this about? I'm calling because I need to do my four-color mana base video, but we've never had four-color commanders before. Just do what you did for the other mana base videos. I can't! What I did before was I researched existing mana bases. I tested deck after deck of commanders in those colors, read article after article written by experts. None of that exists for four-color. I don't know, just, you know, figure it out. Well, duh, that's what I'm trying to do by calling you. So tell me how a four color mana base should go. So you want me to do your work for you? Hey, I'm a professor. I can't come up with stuff on my own. What I do is I take the work that other people have done and then I present it in an accessible way. Do you think a physics professor came up with whatever sciencey thing they're lecturing on? No, some expert discovered it and they regurgitate it. Regurgitate? Mm-hmm, like a mother bird to her young. 
Uh, uh, all right, what do you need? Just tell me how to build an optimum four color mana base with footnotes on budget options. Okay, sure, no problem. Sir, you are truly a gentleman and a scholar and the commander master. Thanks again, Jimmy. Wait, what? This is Josh. Josh? Oh, crap. Crap! Is Jimmy there? Uh, no. He's... in the... tub? Uh, fine, okay, I guess you'll have to do the one who isn't on Netflix. Hey, well, at least I'll get the basic math correct. <laughs> Fair point. The first thing we need to do when building a four color mana base is ask ourselves some questions. Starting with, what is the color balance of my deck? Meaning how many cards of each color do I have? Most decks use around 38 lands and 61 non-lands. Woo, with Eternal Masters coming out, I have just got one question on the mind. What should I build in Legacy? Let's see. All right, what do we got here? What do we got here? We got Counterbalance, eh. Merfolk, no, nah, everyone will hate me. High Tide, I have no idea how that works. Huh, Charbelcher, that's an affordable legacy deck. Hi, I'm Hoogie, the MTG assistant. It looks like you are trying to build a magic deck. Would you like some help? Ah, uh, Hoogie is so annoying, but he builds pretty good decks. It looks like you are trying to build a legacy deck. May I suggest playing Modern instead? Would you like me to guide you through Modern Kiki Court? No, we're building Legacy. Are you sure? The correct answer really is Modern. Enough of your sass. Just let me build a Legacy deck, Hoogie. <sighs> all right, we'll build Legacy. It looks like you want to build Charbelcher, so I guess you're not all bad. Uh-huh. Let me just import this Belcher deck list from 2011, and we're all done. Good thing Legacy never changes. It looks like you don't know what you're talking about. Though slightly inferior to modern, Legacy is still a dynamic format where deck lists grow, evolve, and refine over time. Are you sure about that? Let's build an actual competitive Charbelcher deck instead. All right, Legacy Charbelcher, which I can only assume is mono red goblin aggro. Let's go. It looks like you really don't know what you're talking about. Charbelcher is nothing like the deck you describe. Would you like a tutorial on Charbelcher? Mmm, okay. Great. Before we begin, it looks like some of your artwork needs updating. All right, that's because they reprinted Goblin Charbelcher and Eternal Masters. Good thing, too, because that card was up to $6 a piece. Ridiculous. Oh, Liliana, you are as beautiful as you are deadly. Oh, Jace, I am so charmed by your mysterious and enigmatic ways. Oh, Liliana. You're the only one who understands me. Oh, Jace, your mind is so powerful. Everyone who made fun of you in high school was just jealous of your powerful mind. Oh, Liliana, I want to write some poetry about you. Oh, I just love that you write poetry instead of playing sports. Take me, you sexy blue mage, you. <coughs> <laughs> we here at Talarian Community College take Magic the Gathering very seriously. That's why our faculty and staff work hard to bring you quality videos about cardboard and cardboard accessories. Whether it's an in-depth analysis of Magic the Gathering products, detailed and extensive analysis on card sleeves and other gaming accessories, introductory deck lectures for standard, commander, modern, and other formats, or just long-winded tirades from our tired, overworked, and, let's face it, out-of-touch professors. Start the path to earning your degree today by clicking on subscribe. Talarian Community College. If you love Magic the Gathering, you're already enrolled. Uh, 
Uh, hey there, Caleb. Oh, hey, Prof. I found your collection. I found your cards here. This is, uh, this is neat. Not sure about the, the curve on this, but... What are you doing in my office with my magic cards? Just passing through town? Figured we could watch a movie or something, hang out, bro down? What do you, what do you think? Uh-huh, cool, cool. How did you get in the office? I have a security system. Security system? The four-digit alphanumeric? Come on, I set up OBS. That is nothing. Yeah, despite the disturbing fact of you in my office, I can't watch a movie right now, man. I got a video to make. A video? Well, I can help you with that. How would you like the number one Twitch streamer to shoot your video for you? Seriously? You can make that happen? Yeah, I'd love a deck tech from Jeff Hoagland. Hoagland? No, I'm the number one Twitch streamer. Me! You watch a movie with me, I will do a deck tech for you. Okay, deal. What movie do you want to watch? What movie? Only the best movie of all time. Star Wars. Check out this Tatooine. <sighs> you know, I've never seen Star Wars, and there's like nine of them or whatever, and I'm always hearing everybody yelling at everybody else about which ones are good and which ones are bad, and I don't really want to deal with that. You don't have to get into all that. You don't have to deal with it. Start with the first one. George Lucas, the height of his filmmaking powers, legendary filmmaker, makes this, uh, this movie that becomes an iconoclast of American society. You need to see this movie, and if you don't like it, you don't have to watch any of the other ones. All right, man, deal. I watch the first one with you, and if I don't like it, I don't have to watch any more, and either way, I get a deck tech from you. Bet, it's a deal. Let's fire up the video. Ready? Let's do this. Hold on, this is the wrong movie. This is episode one. Yeah, the first Star Wars. No, 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 the, the, the first Star Wars is A New Hope. This is episode one. Right, you said you wanted to watch the first Star Wars. This is the first Star Wars. I rented the first Star Wars. These movies are not good. These movies are travesties. Well, you're the one who wanted to watch it, dude. You needed to rent Star Wars episode four, A New Hope. No way, dude. I'm not doing one of those things where I have to wait through four movies just for the show to get good. If it's not good from the start, there's no point to it. I, I, so this is it. This is what I agreed to watch, the first episode. A New Hope is the start. Oh my God. Quiet, I can't hear the space rabbit. Uh -oh. What's he saying? I'm not trading a deck tech for the Phantom Menace. The deal is off, sir. The deal, the deal is off. The deal is not off. I'm watching this stupid movie. You have to do the stupid deck tech. I will ruin you. I will ruin this building. I will ruin your YouTube channel. I will destroy you. This is, this is, this is the worst. No, oh, I have never been treated this way. I will never do a deck tech for episode one. Episode one. Jeff Hoagland's so much easier to work with. the worst movie ever made. This. Hey, Professor, do you have a moment? Well, I am kind of in the middle of something right now, but you know what? It can wait. It can wait. What can I do for you, Johnny? I have a question about why Mono Bluetron doesn't run Karn or Emrakul. What's the question? Why doesn't Mono Bluetron run Karn or Emrakul? Ha <laughs> ha, Johnny. That's a question many Magic the Gathering players ask. Yep. Many, many. Uh-huh. It's asked a lot. So what's the answer? <sighs> Let's turn to page 563. Well... He drafts, but only Ice Age. He owns a Black Lotus. 
which he only plays in his casual cat tribal deck. His commander is a Togatog, but there are no other Atog in his deck. He buys old fat packs, but just for the novels. He is the most interesting magic player in the world. I don't always play Legacy, but when I do, I play Dead Guy Ale. Keep your mana open, my friends. Dead Guy Ale is a black-white mid-range deck with disruptive elements in the Legacy format. At the core of our deck... Huh. Hmm. Professor, I was wondering if I could talk to you about the study guide? Ugh, oh, not another typo. It was late. I was tired. Why can't you students leave me alone during my office hours? It's my me time. Oh no, it's not that. It's just that in the Modern Affinity Study Guide, you've written one line and it says, play your entire opening hand on turn one and hope for the best. Right, Modern Affinity. Well, not really. I'm actually writing my dissertation on Affinity, and I've been studying it for a long time. There's a lot more to it than just dumping your whole hand on turn one. These are really meant as introductory guides. I can't go into excessive detail about every deck ever. But your modern burn study guide is 85 pages long. It takes a true connoisseur to appreciate all the nuances and details to mono red burn. And your guide for the best pencil to use for keeping track of your life total is 198 pages. Most people think it's the number two pencil that's the best, but it's not, huh? Eh? All right, I'm going to level with you. I know nothing about modern affinity other than the fact that it runs only affinity cards. Actually, modern affinity only plays one affinity card. Oh no, I know nothing, nothing about modern affinity. You've got to help me. It's impossible for me to learn new things. I'm a professor. I know nothing, nothing. How does this deck even work? Well... If you are interested in a commander deck that is both fun and enjoyable, then you would be better off on a different YouTube channel. This commander deck not only is devoid of both fun and enjoyment, but it is highly likely to have you angrily ousted from whatever playgroups you are a part of and cost you whatever friendships you may have. My name is The Professor, and it is my solemn duty to provide a deck tech on Leovold, Emissary of Trest. But you in the audience have no obligation to build it, and I would advise all my viewers to turn this video off immediately and go play a more pleasant deck instead. This deck will be Grief, Misery, and the Fun Police, a term which here means grief and misery. In the unlikely event that an opponent is able to win against it, they will take no joy. Everyone will hate playing against it and you, and it will ruin the game of Commander, not only for yourself, but for everyone you play it against. The dreadful displeasure of this vile commander has haunted me since the card was first spoiled. And every night when I continue my work on the Leovold deck tech, I find myself weeping thinking of its utter oppressiveness and severe lack of political talent. And thus, I regret to inform you that Leovold, Emissary of Trest, makes it so that each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. As if this were not enough, whenever you or a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. <laughs> oh, he takes magic too seriously sometimes. Professor, I have a deck to show you. Ah, yes, please, come in and have a seat. What do you have to show me, Billy? It's Will, sir. I've put together a tier one modern deck that I thought you might be interested in. It's an angel paw deck. <laughs> Actually, I believe it's called a Maliripod deck, Billy. It's Will, sir. And actually, there's no Malira in this deck. LSV and his team determined that Malira was not crucial to the deck's success, and that games were more often won by just activating Birthing Pod over and over. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that. Who said I didn't? I was just, um, testing you. Yes, 
It was a test, Billy, and you passed. Good job. I mean, I, I know what an angel pod deck is, and totally know what LSVs are. But why don't you go ahead and explain what your deck does to me as though I didn't? And I'll uh, follow along and uh, make sure you get it right. Well... Hello, my name is Becky. Thank you for calling Command Tower Support Line. How may I help you? Yeah, hi. So I bought the Wizards Precon deck from Commander 2017, and it just isn't doing what I want it to do against all of the hyper-competitive Commander decks that have filled up the meta at my local game store. The deck isn't working. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Have you tried unsleeving and resleeving your deck? Yeah, yeah, I did that already, and it took half an hour because I double sleeve my commander decks. Why did you have me do that in the first place? And you've checked to see whether or not you've taken the deck out of the deck box. Yes, and this has nothing to do with how my deck plays. Oh, I see. Can you please be more specific about what your deck is failing to accomplish? I want them to suffer. Um, excuse me, sir, who? My enemies. I want them to suffer. Uh, sir, you realize that Commander is a fun, casual format. Oh, I'll have fun. Oh, I see. Um, I'll have to transfer you to one of our laboratory maniacs. Please stand by. <laughs> on the line, sir. I'm one of the laboratory maniacs. This call may be monitored for quality assurance purposes. How may I help you today? Ugh, I already gave you all this information. I want my enemies to suffer. I see, I see. You need a much more competitive deck. How much would you like your enemies to suffer? As much as possible. We can upgrade that deck for you with Anala as the commander. The full upgrade cost $4,000, and we do have an installment plan. Ooh, uh, no, 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 not that much. Uh, some of these people have families. Well, we do have a $1,500 version for a slightly toned down amount of malice. You couldn't tone it down anymore, could you? Well, our $800 version will make them curse you and your firstborn child. Let's, let's leave my kid out of this. Uh, is there a cheaper option? Our lowest tier will cause an ample amount of annoyance at $500, akin to a bad rash. Perfect. I'll just sell a couple of lands from my modern deck. Excellent. You're one of the first folks to get your hands on this deck deck. Your enemies will never see it coming. Fantastic. I am so looking forward to surprising everyone and... Oh, shoot! Inala, Archmage Ritualist, is an exciting new commander from Commander 17. Headlining the Wizard Tribe. Uh, hey there, Gavin. Oh, hey, Prof, how's it going? What are you doing in my office? Well, many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, when is Magic the Gathering R&D going to come and visit the Prof? And I was in town, so I just, I don't know, figured I'd come on down. Cool, cool. You know, I, I have an alarm system, so how exactly did you get in here? Yeah, but it's only a four-digit code, and like to get into R&D, you have to show that you can crack a four-digit code. I crack that on like a Tuesday for fun. Wait, has R&D been in my office before? Your office? No, 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 not your office. Cool. Well, as ominous as that sounds, I would love to interview you about Magic the Gathering. Uh, the interview sets over here if you want to talk about it now. Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to do an interview with you. That sounds great. I mean, that's what I'm down here for. Why exactly were you sorting my cards? Well, you have your cards sorted by set, which is like kind of useful, but I thought I would actually sort them by most likely to be banned. I just as a little courtesy for you, but it's fine. I can come back to this later. Let me um, just put these here. Great, let's do this. Huh, I think I just wanna most likely to be banned. Oh. No!
And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.